Good morning, everybody. Thank God for a new day. The Bible says God's mercies are new every morning. Is that not right, Amanda? Amen. Amen. So are you going to start? And Yes, I just want to read a few verses from Psalm 143. And it's David calling out to the Lord. And he says, my soul thirsts for you. And isn't that our prayer this morning? Our souls thirst for the Lord. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my pleas for mercy. In your faithfulness, answer me in your righteousness. So that's Psalm 143, verse 1. Yes. That's wonderful. Next and verse. Down in verse 5, it says, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all that you have done. I ponder the work of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. So our soul this morning thirsts for God. We cry out to God for his mercy and for his outpouring this morning because there's no one else to turn to in our crisis but the Lord. Thank you, Amanda. That's, that's a beautiful psalm. So Amanda was reading from a portion of our daily Bible reading, and uh, it's the 1st of April. Happy 1st of April to you. They say it's April Fool's Day. Well, we are no fools. If we're, <laughs> if we're fools, we're fools for God. Anyway, April the 1st, the Bible reading for today, Joshua chapter 10, Jeremiah chapter 4, Psalm 142 and 143, and Matthew's Gospel chapter 18. Now, the uh, uh, daily Bible reading is posted online and it is in the Revival Times Extra section. So if you go to katie.org, go to Revival Times, and then under Revival Times, you'll have a menu of all the Revival Times past issues, including March. And then there, there is a section there for the day, daily Bible reading. And when you're there, also remember that there is a, a little uh, booklet, which we've had permission to put online, Seven Minutes with God, uh, the text is there for you. I'm going to come back to that today uh, to explain why we have posted this. So that is the daily Bible reading. And in a moment, we're going to look a little bit at Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18, to select a couple of portions of Scripture. So, uh, Amanda, you know, we're hearing a lot of good news stories uh, that are coming in through uh, media, uh, BBC and things. So we have this story I, of, of two Italian boys. Uh, they look very young uh, guys, and they have uh, invented uh, through 3D printing how you can adapt a face mask, you know, that we divers wear. In fact, I should have brought mine down and, show, and show, shown you. And they can adapt it through 3D printing and now, I mean, it's saving lives already. And they've load, uploaded it to the internet. The whole world can download it and manufacture these. And the, these young guys are so happy that they're doing something. This is an amazing outpouring of compassion. Who said millennials were entitled human beings? <laughs> Who said Generation Z, the Zoomers? The Zoomers have come into their own because we're all Zooming now with the Zoom app. Um, but this is wonderful. I am so encouraged and delighted to see out in regular society how people are pulling together and, and doing good stuff, and especially the young people. Yesterday, we uh, um, put on furlough uh, quite a number of our staff who now are unable to work because they can't travel to KT or Summit Building, and we've allocated all us all our duties around other members of staff. Church is seven, uh, seven days out of seven. It's not just what happens on Sunday. And you're getting this now live from West Ealing on Wednesday morning. And we've been up with the, with the birds this morning uh, every day. Uh, and we're working round the clock, round the clock is an exaggeration, at least until nine, 10 o'clock. And the staff are doing the same. We are very active and very busy. And so you're gonna get insights into what the church is, not just Sunday gatherings. But remember, uh, Amanda, can you recall any other good news stories that have come in or anything from the news media you wanted to focus on? Um, nothing comes to mind at the moment. The young boy of 13. Uh, oh, that's, 
a young boy who yeah. passed away. Yes. Yes, that's a very big tragedy in the news this morning. Two teenagers, a 19-year-old who is an Italian living in London and a 13-year-old boy who lives in London, both sadly have lost their life through this coronavirus. So um, every loss of life is, is tragic. Um, but um, when we think of young kids, maybe there was a pre-existing condition, we don't know. But we're going to continue to pray for God's healing power. Let's let's remember to pray for that family. We don't we don't know who they are. And I, I want you please to send in your prayer requests. There is Amanda has a mobile, your text and WhatsApp messages to 07570. That is 07570 261 697. I'll say it again. 07570 261 697. And you can also uh, contact us directly here. I'll get this text, I'll get this message on my on my iPhone. Uh, and what, what you do is go to the normal response section on our live stream, which is now renamed KTTV. And then there's a response and we'll get some messages. Now, before we go into the Bible reading, just as we went off air yesterday, Amanda, you received a message. It's a very poignant message. Can you share that with us? It was to do with a young man who was going through uh, feeling depression and so forth. Yes, a young man called Frankie, he asked specifically for prayer for his, he said he's in a deep phrase of depression and anxiety, whether it's a pre-condition he has or whether it's caused by the anxiety of which we're all living in at the moment, I don't know, but he sounded quite in need of prayer. So we want to pray for Frank Frankie this morning. And we've had other prayer requests come in this morning. We have a prayer request for an 80-year-old grandmother is being diagnosed with the virus. We have a prayer request for Angie, who is critically ill at the moment. Don't know if she is, if it's the virus or another condition, but we will remember her in prayer this morning as well. Okay, so why, why don't we pause and do that right now? We'll come back for more prayer mm -hmm. at the end. But um, Amanda was sharing with me this morning about that verse, Philippians chapter 4, um, where it, it, it is speaking about the peace of God. So <clears throat> verse 6, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, do not be anxious about anything. Notice that's a command. Sounds harsh. God is commanding us not to be anxious. But actually, every time you see a command, for us as New Covenant believers, you, you know there is power and enablement to fulfill that command. So what God is saying here is that he is giving us ability, strength, to overcome our anxiety. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Wonderful. So, what the what God is saying is, look, if, if if you want to overcome anxiety, make sure you pray. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. And if you pray about everything, you're not going to worry about anything. It will be easier not to anyway. And then he says that you mix your prayer with requests and thanksgiving. And we're going to make sure we have plenty of thanksgiving uh, in, in our at times in these early morning devotions. And then it says, let your requests be made known to God. And here is the promise. The peace of God will garrison. It's the, it's the word used of a, of a garrison. That is an, a group of soldiers who, who are there for protection. The garrison. And there is a garrison around your heart. There's a garrison around your life. There's a garrison around your family. There's a garrison around the church of Jesus Christ. And I believe we can pray for a garrison that God will protect our nation as we pray for our nation. So let's pray for these two 
people. Let's pray for the family of that young 13-year-old and pray for this request that came in late yesterday. Lord Jesus, we just come before you this morning, the all, all creating God, the all healing God, Father. And we pray this morning for these two families. You know who they are, Father God. You know their broken hearts of the parents and their siblings and those left behind. Father, we ask this morning that you would heal their broken hearts, that you would comfort them, Lord, in their great time of need. And Lord, that they would realize that they can call out to you the all healing God, and that you will be with them, Father. Father, we just pray your blessing upon these families. In Jesus' name, we pray this morning. And we remember others in prayer this morning. We pray for Frankie, who's suffering from this great depression and anxiety. Amen. Lord, let that scripture from Philippians comfort him this morning. Let the peace of God minister to him this morning in his home or wherever he is. Father, minister to him. We lift up to you also, Lord, this young nephew who is going for cancer treatment. Father God, we pray that as he goes in for cancer treatment, Lord, that you will protect him from this COVID-19 virus, Lord God, that you will just put a hedge round about him and surround him, Father God, with your protection and your healing power this morning. We also remember Angie, who is critically ill. Father, we just lift her to you as we do this 80-year-old lady, grandmother as well. We lift them all into your care, Father God, and we ask that you would just minister. Send your ministering angels to minister to them right where they are now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Yeah, um, and I've just had a message that's come in from our live stream from Ethel, Ethel Rogers. And Ethel says, good morning to all. And she's waving at you. Blessed day. And this is lovely. Send in your greeting. Send in your greeting. It's great to hear from you as well as your prayer requests. But also on the mobile number that Amanda is, has, don't just send in your, your prayer request. Please do that. Send in your praise requests. Also send in news and particularly in picture, do a little video. If you've seen something interesting happening in your neighborhood, people delivering food, keep your social distancing two <laughs> meters minimum. But take some footage, just point the camera and hold it steady. Hold it this way as opposed to that way so that we can edit, edit these things together. We want to make a program, a feedback pro program. And there's a hashtag on this, which is called hashtag KT without walls, and I'll be corrected if that is not absolute up-to-date information. So I'm calling upon all those who offer me and render me personal assistance to let me know. But I think it is hashtag uh, church without walls or KT without walls. Church we'll come for Yeah, but it's got, it must be KT, KT because church without walls, that's everybody. That's the whole body of Christ. And that's what's exciting to me uh, today. Yes, you have something here. Can you please pray for my finances to improve? I'm waiting for a job in retail or healthcare. Thank you, Ricky. Oh, by the way, if you send us, uh, we, we're just going to give you a first name. If you want to be anonymous, just 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 say, uh, uh, put your name so we know who you are and say Anon, and then we won't mention your name. But uh, 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 for the moment, I take it I have that permission. So we pray for Ricky, Lord, today, and we praise you that this man has faith because he's coming for prayer, meaning he expects something to happen. And we ask, Father, that you would intervene in Ricky's finances and also indeed in all the finances of your people who are struggling at the moment with being placed, uh, either have not been able to work, who maybe have lost some income. We, we ask, Father, that you would make this up and we pray, Father, that as we are faithful in our giving, in our serving, in our praising, in our worshiping, and in our fellowship, that you will pour out an abundance, a supernatural abundance of financial, practical, and physical provision. And we pray, Father, that there will be an opening in retail or indeed healthcare. And we understand that there are needs in retail today, particularly online retail. There are needs in healthcare. So we ask, Father, that you would open the door and make a way for Ricky today. Amen. 
the all the prayer requests that you send in, if for any reason we miss praying for them here, and even for those we do pray for, I just want to assure you that they're prayed for through the day and through the week. It's not a one-off. There are a prayer team. There's a prayer team praying continuously for these prayer requests. Yes. Yeah, so all, all our live stream uh, broadcasts or are, are monitored by our staff, and they usually follow up very, very quickly. And there are people who are dedicating their free time to praying right across our network. Yeah. Just before that prayer request came in from Ricky, I was I was thinking about the 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 gratitude, the, the joy that it, it, there is. And you, if you saw that, it was on, I think, one of the be breakfast programs. And um, the, the young, two young guys, uh, not necessarily a good judge of age. I mean, anybody under 80 is young, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> and I am happy. I'm not, I'm under 80, therefore I'm young. So I've got a vested interest in, in putting that uh, idea forward. But... Um, the, the, these guys were young. They looked to me like in their 20s, possibly mid-20s, um, and two guys uh, obviously self-isolating uh, in, in a household together in, uh, in Italy. And um, they were so excited how they've been using their time to adapt um, a, a diver's mask. All it is, we, we, we call it yeah, a mask. What do we call it? Snorkel. No, when you no. put it on your face, we we call it mask. That is the professional term for it. I think so. Goggles. 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 We've those divers goggles, and um, they they've worked out a way of adapting that diver's mask and having it sealed so it can be a breathing apparatus attached to materials which they have uh, produced by 3D printing, and then it's downloadable all over the world. And they heard. Uh, I forget which nation it was, but some other nation way across the waters where they were, uh, some medical person um, said there are now 100 people breathing. I think it was 100 breathing now, which, which wouldn't have been able to breathe if this hadn't happened. And young people are giving their time. Some of my friends who don't yet know Jesus, uh, I, I suppose we usually say they're non-Christians. But I, I don't think that's a very polite way of referring to people. But anyway, then have not yet made a decision to follow Christ. And um, they are overjoyed at the work that they're doing in volunteering and being useful when they're unable to work uh, and unable to get any income. But they're giving their time to serve the community and those in need. And there's an outpouring of joy. Jesus said it is more blessed to give than receive. And that's not just about finances. No. It's about, you know, it's wonderful to receive. I had a, a lovely gift <laughs> left on my doorstep by uh, Marcelo, one, one of our pastors. He heard that I was, uh, Mandra and I were wanting to cook up curry and uh, <laughs> just a minor thing. I've got loads of spices and we can do without curry powder. But uh, anyway, it appeared on our doorstep, uh, safe from a distance, opened the door, and there was Marcelo keeping more than a safe uh, social distance from me and just a wave of a hand. And, and that's a small act of kindness. And, um, and I think somebody said, well, we've got to take care of your old people. Yes. All right. We will move rapidly on. <laughs> but anyway, we are also ministering right across our network. Last night, I had a Zoom meeting with the satellite pastors and the good news that is coming, the, the satellite churches, satellite pastors or network yeah. pastors, they are, are broadcasting, whether it's iPhone or, or Zoom, and business is as usual. In fact, there's more connection, more service, more ministry happening. I mean, Amanda and I are here with you every morning, 9 to 9.30, Monday to Friday, the KT television is going on throughout the day. We're adding different programs to it tomorrow uh, at 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. We're launching a kids program. Yeah, and Wednesday and tomorrow, sorry. So th Thursday. It's starting on Monday. Starting on Monday. Okay. So they've had to put it off a little bit. Uh, but from Monday, every morning, 8 to 9 for the children. Um, and uh, they're also in touch doing uh, little cell meetings, Zoom meetings, and this, this, the staff are having prayer meetings every morning. 
Um, our music pastor, Jean Erst, is holding a prayer meeting every morning, seven o'clock for the worship team and praying and they're praying for you. So there's so, so, so much prayer. Let's multiply prayer, maximize prayer, because do you know what? The peace of God that passes all understanding, meaning, oh, I should be anxious, but I'm not. Why? It's the supernatural peace of God. It's the shalom of God, the peace of God touching your life. Did, did you mention that the children's ministry are praying three times a day, morning, lunchtime, and evening? Um, so they're really active in their prayer life, praise God. Right. And then, of course, our normal network of intercessors and um, uh, are praying. And tonight, from this very spot, at 7 a.m. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Thank you. <laughs> 7 p.m. I got to get my a.m.s and p.m.s right. At 7 p.m. Uh, will be the um, uh, prayer meeting. I will begin. Jean Erst is going to do some live worship. He is out of London with his parents. He was away on holiday last week, and it was wise for him to stay where he was and to self-isolate with his family and his brothers and his sisters, a little sister was appearing there, his mother and father. And so maybe John Erst is watching. So um, let me just say something in French. John, John Erst is half French and he speaks French. Bonjour, Jean. Comment ça va? J'espère que tu vas bien avec toi et ton, ta famille. But I better brush up my French as well as my AM and PMs. And then after John Erst has led us in some worship, Mans and I will lead from here, and I will be speaking in the first message based uh, from this book. I've actually done two, the protection section and also the abundance section, but I'll be beginning at the beginning. And now this book is out of print, God's Word in My Mouth. It's out of print, but it is now available in PDF. If you go to kt.org, you will have an announcement there about the various ways of giving, and alongside that, you have this as a free gift from the ministry to you. It's PDF and um, and it is the whole thing. And I would like you to dip into this because after every chapter, there is a declaration that we can say together, a declaration of faith. God's word in my mouth is as powerful as God's word in his mouth when it comes as an overflow of the heart of faith, words of faith coming from there. So that is, uh, and I'll say a little bit more uh, about the television program uh, later. But for now, I want to turn you, please, to the book of Matthew, chapter 18. And Matthew chapter 18 is on our Bible reading list today. Uh, as you know, if you follow the Bible reading program that we have set for you, um, it takes you through the whole of the Bible once a year and the New Testament twice. And this is a discipline of daily Bible reading that we are wanting to look at. So a few words from Matthew chapter 18. If you open it up and most Bibles have put paragraphs there and given some kind of heading, uh, you know that the headings are not inspired. That's just the work of Bible societies and Bible translators who make it easy. So in my Bible, the first paragraph, first section is who is the greatest? Second section, temptations to sin. Then we have the parable of the lost sheep. And then we have the, the parable or the story of what happens if your brother sins against you. And then the parable of the unforgiving servant. And so there is a lot of material here. I just want to focus for a few moments on the, those opening verses. So Matthew 18, verse 1. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, truly, I say to you, unless you turn and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. How interesting. 
that there is this, even this debate, even this discussion, who is the greatest? And I know from 29 years of senior leadership in Kensington Temple and more years before that in a full-time Christian ministry, as they say, um, pastoring other churches as well. I know that this is a ministry problem. There is this spirit of competition. Who is the greatest? And sometimes to make yourself look great, it is easy to put other people down. And this spirit of competition, um, I don't know whether I'm encouraged by the fact that obviously it was in the disciples showing that we are not that unusual uh, if we struggle with these things today in the ministry, but it shouldn't be there. And Jesus gives the corrective to this. Of course, it's not just a ministry problem. I think this spirit of competitiveness, and it's all about self-image. It's all about, I feel I need to be needed, and, and I better, I'm better than you are because I feel bad about myself, and I'm trying to boost myself. Oh, the, there's a psychological can of worms when we, when we take the lid off that. But if we accept, as I do, and I hope you do too, that there is this negative tendency. What's the answer? Humble yourself like a little child. And uh, speaking to people who don't yet know Christ, I know for many of them, this is the big issue. They, they simply find it difficult to say, I'm wrong. God is right. I have offended God. And I am sorry. And I submit. This idea of submitting to a higher authority goes right against the spirit of the age. The spirit of the age is much more like saying, all right, God is within me anyway, and it's all just some kind of influence. We're all one. So there is no objective external reality called God, a God who has a mind, emotions, and will, who created us, to whom we are accountable. That's uncomfortable. They will take recourse in spirits, in angels, and, and all kinds of mysticism, mythologies, and spiritual technologies. They'll do all that. But actually, sometimes I think that they do all of that to avoid this. God, I'm sorry. And I want to be his little child, trusting you, not blind trust, but trusting you to be as a child, to be simple in heart and childlike and to humble ourselves. Now, I'm not pointing the finger at anybody, but if I were to point the finger, it wouldn't just be to people outside the church, people who don't yet know Jesus. This is our problem too. And today, today, we're going to make sure that we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Now, so I just we'll, we'll, we'll come to that. Let me just yes. say, because our time is going and we're just going to finish in prayer. I'll come back to this tomorrow, seven minutes with God. And uh, we, we're just going to finish with, with prayer right now. So you have more prayer requests. Can you take yes. us through these, please, Amanda? Um, this is a prayer request. Uh, someone asking for a prayer for her daughter, who's a GP, pregnant, and has underlying health conditions. She's just asking for protection for her and for her friend who's in intensive care with the coronavirus. There's a prayer request from a sister asking for prayer for her own sister who's nursing in Norway and only has one lung. Um, several more prayer requests have come in, but one for someone called Scott Moore and his father. So I just want to reassure all the people who have sent in requests, if they're not prayed for now, we will be praying for them throughout the day. So be encouraged. We will be praying. Okay. Let, uh, let me pray for those people. Father, we thank you for these prayer requests that have come in. You know every situation and circumstance. And we know that you answer prayer. And we intercede for these in Jesus' name. Hear, Lord, and answer prayer. Amen. We pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen.